Hi, and lesson, uh, welcome to lesson 13.1 on theoretical probability of simple events. And our question is, how do you find the theoretical probability of a simple event? Well, finding theoretical probability. In previous lessons, you found probabilities based on observing data or the experimental probabilities. In this lesson, we're going to learn about the theoretical probabilities. At a school fair, you have a choice of spinning spinner A or spinner B. You win an MP3 player if the spinner lands on a section with a star in it. Which spinner should you choose if you want a better chance of winning? We're going to complete the table here. Total number of outcomes. There are well, there's eight different outcomes in spinner A. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And in spinner B, there's twice as many. There's 16. And so I've recorded 16. The number of sections with stars is one, two, three here, and there are one, two, three, four, five here. So what's the probability? Well, it's three out of eight for this one and five out of 16 for this one. So we compare the ratios of spinner A to spinner B. And what I could do is I could really just uh, double this. If I double that, uh, then I have to double three, which is six. So I can see the six out of 16 for this and five out of 16 for that. So spinner A is gr has a greater ratio uh, than spinner B. So I should choose, choose spinner A for a better chance of winning. So let's reflect on this. The theoretical probability is a way to describe how you found the chance of winning at uh, an MP3 player in the scenario above. Using the spinner example to help you, Explain in your own words how you find the theoretical probability of an event. Well, <laughs> in my words, the theoretical probability of an event is a ratio comparing the number of ways the event can occur, so the number of ways the event can occur, divided by the total number of outcomes, uh, to the total number of outcomes for the experiment. Next. We're going to calculate theoretical probability of simple events. And this comes back to what was just going on in our explore activity here. And this fraction right here is generalized as the, the theoretical probability is the probability that an event can happen when all of the outcomes of the experiment are equally likely. The probability of an event P of an event is the number of ways the event can occur divided by the total number of equally likely outcomes. Probability can be written as a fraction, a decimal or a percent. For example, the probability you win with spinner B is 5 out of 16, which is back to this right here, was 5 out of 16. You can also write that as 0.3125 or 31.25%. All you have to do is move the uh, if you move the decimal two times, you have th you've now changed the decimal to a percent, and you get that 0.3125 by putting in the calculator five sixteenths. You have five divided by sixteen point three one two five. Example one: a bag contains six red marbles and twelve blue ones. You select one marble at random from a bag. What is the probability that you select a red marble? and write your answer in simplest form. Okay, we're going to find the number of ways the event can occur. That is the number of red marbles, which is six, uh, right there. And we need to find the total number of likely outcomes. So we have to add up all the marbles together, which is 18. There are 18 possible outcomes that could happen. So we're looking for the ones that are red. So the ones that are red are 6 out of 18, which simplifies to 1 third. So our probability of selecting a red marble is 1 third, simplified. Next, the your turn question. You roll the number cube one time. What is the probability that you roll a 3 or 4? Write your answer in simplest form. So the probability of rolling a 3 or 4. Well, on the top, it's the number of sides with, that's W and a slash means with a three or four. I had to squeeze it in there. Divided by the total number of sides on the cube. Well, there's a three and a four, so that's that's two options here. So there's the two out of total sides in the number cube is six, and that simplifies to one third. How is the sample space for an event related to the formula for theoretical probability? Well, sample space. 
Let's think about that. That's the total number of things that could happen. So the total number of outcomes in the sample space is the denominator of the formula for theoretical probability. So this is always the sample space, the total number of things that, that can happen. Next, our second activity, comparing theoretical and uh, experimental probability. Now that you've calculated theoretical probabilities, you may wonder how theoretical and experimental probabilities compare. Six students are performing in a talent contest. You roll a number cube to determine the order of the performances. You roll a number cube, and this is the number cube, just to remind you. Complete the table of theoretical probabilities for the different outcomes. So there's one one out of six sides for this number cube. There's a two, there's a three, a four, a five, and a six. There's one of each of them out of six total sides. Six different outcomes. Predict the number of rolls. Each number uh, will be rolled out out of 30. So uh, I'm saying out of 30 total rolls, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, it should be even. It should be evenly distributed. All of them should come up five times. That's theoretically what should happen. And for the experimental, what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this. So there's one. So one. And I'm going to, I'm going to do the rest of them. I'm going to pause this and I'll show you the results. Okay, so the experiment is done and I rolled this 30 times and this is what happened. Uh, the frequency, that's how many times each of them happened. And the experimental probability, oh, what I should have done is 3. I should have written, that was 3 out of 30, 2, 4, oops, 2 out of 30, 4 out of 30, 6 out of 30, another 6 out of 30, and 9 out of 30. Okay. Look at the tables you completed. How do the experimental probabilities compare with the theoretical probabilities? The experimental probabilities are not close to the theoretical probabilities. Yeah, they're just not. And what will happen is if I did this experiment more, more trials, more than 30, if I did 100, 200, 300, it will more closely relate to the theoretical probability. A conjecture. By performing more trials, you tend to get the experimental results are closer to the theoretical probabilities. Combine your table from step three with those of your classmates. Well, I don't have classmates. And to make one table for the class. How do the class experimental probabilities compare to the theoretical probabilities? Well, what should be happening is the experimental probabilities are closer to the theoretical probabilities because you've now combined a whole bunch of trials. You have uh, many more trials that will then get closer and closer to that theoretical, what should be happening. Now to reflect, could experimental probabilities ever be exactly equal to the theoretical probability? If so, how likely is it? If not, why not? Well, yes, it could match it exactly. The experimental, pro experimental probabilities could be exactly equal to the theoretical probabilities, but it's not very likely. Not unless you got lots and lots of trials. It's pretty hard to actually get exactly that amount. And so that is what you need to know about theoretical probabilities of our simple events. Thank you for watching.